The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hi, Orangeville, and welcome back to this episode of the Post Office. You guys have all been tuning in as I've been introducing some members of council, and this week we're going to take a little bit of a twist, and I've got some special guests joining me today. Um, I've brought in Larry Kurtz from the Blues and Jazz Festival, Hello. who's no stranger to Orangeville, and Alex Larive, who is part of the Celebrate Your Awesome committee. So I'm glad to have you both here so we can talk about some of the really cool festivals that we have in Orangeville. So we'll talk a little bit about the history of both festivals and then a little bit of what's coming up this year. So Larry, Sounds I'm going to start with you. Oh, sure. Yeah. If you want to introduce yourself first to sure. the, the group, we've got yeah. some new Orangevillians who have joined us lately. So. Sure. So my name is Larry Kurtz, and uh, I'm the person who started the Orangeville Blues and Jazz Festival. And uh, we started with a group of five volunteers the first year. Is that all that it was? No eh? committee, just <laughs> wow. myself and five volunteers. That's amazing. And. Uh, the reason I wanted to do a festival is just bringing music into Orangeville. At the time, we had we had some music, but uh, I was going into the city seeing a lot of it, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to bring some of my favorites and others into town? And uh, instead of always having to drive to Toronto, we could have them play here. So that was the, the germ of the <laughs> seed for a festival. And uh, yeah, five volunteers the first year. Wow. We uh, basically... Um, I self-funded it, so there was no grants, and uh, I just, I'm, I'm a woodworker by trade, so I went to all of my own customers and asked them to sponsor this unknown event, and uh, help worked with my friend who was a designer and designed a program, and sold my own ads, mm -hmm. and then uh, went to the town and asked for permission to use Alexander Park which uh, we were able to do. So yeah, it started out pretty small. And what year was that? That was 2003. 2003, wow. so, so we're 20 years this year. Well, yes, we had two years of pandemic with yes. no festival. Uh, so we're calling this our 19th festival. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah, we did a couple of virtual events during yeah. the pandemic, but we wouldn't call that our festival. That was just keeping the doors open, the lights on, and uh, the full-on festival came back last year. So this is year 19. That's amazing. Yeah. So that first year then, how many acts would you have had in Alexander Park in year I had one? seven acts. Seven acts for the yeah. first year, that's amazing. So the first year I rented a, a portable stage and that's pretty well in the same location we do it now. And then we used the band shell as well as a second stage. So we had uh, acts going back and forth for the, for the day. And uh, our headliner the first year was an artist, Jack DeKaiser, who is very well known in Canadian blues. Uh, he had just, I was going, yes, he just won the Juno Award after I booked him. Oh, really? And so <laughs> we had the Juno winner coming to play our festival. Uh, so the morning of uh, the festival, I got woke at 6 a.m. by the guys with the stage. They were there early. I didn't know oh. they were going to be that early. <laughs> and it was pouring rain, like just coming down. And so we, uh, I went over to the park. We helped them get it all located and set up. And by about noon, the rain stopped. And so we had dry enough to hold it outside. And by the time the headliner came on, as soon as he hit his first note, boom, the sun popped out. So it was, it was pretty worked out pretty cool. We were very, very lucky. So that first year, then you just did the one day? It we was did a one, one day, day event. event, a one day. Now I had, actually I had five restaurants the first year as well. Okay. Including, uh, well, the former location of Broadway Music, the church. Yeah. That was a location. That was that was a restaurant at the time called Baba Ganoush. Oh, I forgot about yeah. that. Oh, yeah, Remember that's that? right. It was a cool yes. restaurant. Yeah, and then we had a few coffee shops, like even Second Cup, and a couple of downtown restaurants that are no longer there, but the locations are still there with other businesses now. That's fantastic. So, yeah, yeah, it was uh, very interesting. Uh, I, we had a beer garden the first year, and so financially, that whole festival cost $15,000 to produce wow. and 
through the beer garden, we broke even. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we were, able to, we were able to break even the first year. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, Alex, let's turn it over to Celebrate Your Awesome. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of Celebrate Your Awesome, and I'm no stranger to Celebrate Your Awesome, having been a committee member right from inception as well, but I don't want to talk about it. I want you to tell us the story. So. Well, I have been on the committee, this is my second year now, um, so I was not a part of the original birthing of it, but I'm really happy to be on it now. Um, it was originally formed in 2017, so this will be our sixth annual event to happening online. Yeah. So this will be our fourth in-person event. Um, the first event, I believe, turned in about like five or 2,500 people, and then it's kind of just doubling the numbers and adding 2,500 every year yeah. that it comes. Uh, the whole purpose kind of of bringing Celebrate Your Awesome to my understanding is uh, just the the vision of bringing a place to Orangeville, an event to Orangeville that could kind of pull people out of their shells, allow everyone to come together and celebrate who they were, differences or not, and uh, nurture a, like a community of human connection and safety and support. And it's been really successful. We've heard a lot of really positive feedback from the, um, the community of um, people coming out to their first sort of Pride and Diversity events ever and um, seeing the first drag performances ever and yeah it's been a really lovely thing to come to Orangeville and we're really excited about it every Yeah, day. it's been fantastic for sure. Uh, the name Celebrate Your Awesome, I don't know if you know kind of the history of the Celebrate Your Awesome name, but Jim had approached me back in 2017 and said we should do something for pride and diversity and that kind of yes. stuff in a safe space. Mm -hmm. And my daughter at the time was part of the committee and she was only, I guess, about 10 at she the time. She was young, yeah. She was very young. And so she sat as part of it and just kind of gave that youth perspective of what she'd like to hear. And when we were talking about pride, she said, but it's not just about pride, Mom. Like, it's about celebrating everybody for being awesome. And I'm awesome. like, oh, celebrate your awesome. Hang on a second. And that's where the name came wow. from, was just that trying yeah. to bring people and celebrate everything that makes them special. So, Alex, you just recently joined the committee. So what, what brought you onto the committee? Why did you want to join? Um, I was really excited that, um, so I've literally lived here for my entire life, so t 25 years that I've grown up in Orangeville, and I've always kind of felt like, a, like the odd duckling um, being kind of, I always had like dyed hair in school and not everybody did that and piercings and tattoos and that kind of stuff and um, I came out like really early in high school and there's a, there was always it felt to me like a smaller community of people who were different in Orangeville and um, so Celebrate Your Awesome was something that was really really huge for me um, finding out that there was a bunch of people that just wanted to come out and have a good time and that um, like hate just didn't have home here like that awesome sign that we see yes. around town and that meant a great deal to me to feel um, like safe and held in my own community so that was why I was super excited to join the committee last year and it was a super big hit and I was completely honored to be a part of it and again this year and well, we're glad yeah, you're here for yeah, sure. <laughs> so talking about the growth of festivals over the year, because Orangeville's become known for it. I mean, Blues and Jazz has been named yeah. in the top festivals in the province. Mm -hmm. um, we're well known now for Celebrate Your Awesome. It's getting a name out there in festivals as well. So Orangeville's really become a place that people want to come and experience fun and music and culture. And we mm -hmm. all, the, all of these festivals really bring those things together. So yeah. talk a little bit about the growth of Blues and Jazz over the years, Larry, if you can. Sure. Uh, well, like I said when we started, I estimate maybe 2,500 people attended the first oh, year. So you're kind of the same as us. And, yeah, and we around had, your range, yeah. We had rain mm -hmm. the first time to it. Or rain yeah. the first time yeah. that yeah. was setting up the stage, right? <laughs> And it's funny, people only remember the rain years because we've had a lot of years with no rain. Last year was spectacular. Last year, no beautiful. rain. Yeah. People, there's lots of photos of people with <laughs> umbrellas, right? right? Yeah. yeah. No, we, uh, so the first year when I had, I say I had five volunteers, uh, when I decided to do it again, immediately after the festival, people, they liked the idea. We had a, sort of like a sign up. I had 50 people volunteering the second year. So it was quite a, good feeling to know and I can remember the banner wrote an editorial about the festival and they said well we had our doubts but you know this was pretty good you know so, so it was, it was uh, it, people wanted to jump on board and in fact some of the people um, that came on in the second year still volunteer now so some life, lifelong friends yeah. have been made through the festival uh, and even from the first year, one volunteer is still with us, so it's it's pretty That's cool. Amazing. Yeah, so it kind of um, we were running it like um, 
basically using my money the first two years. Just there was no committee, there was nothing. But uh, in year three, we decided to go and apply to be a nonprofit, and that really kind of got it out of my living room and into a real professional group. And I'd never, I'm a woodworker, and I'd never been in a professional group before, you know, a musician. So uh, had some really smart people helping us out with the organization and we decided to apply for funding through the government grants and so we were able to get enough funding to start to expand it into two days after the third year. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, so we went, well three days I guess, we went Friday night, Saturday, Sunday like we do now. And you're talking about growth, we've come to the point in my mind where we're about as big as I want to be physically. Like we have a lot going on and there's 250 volunteers now so wow. it's it's a lot to manage but i feel like we just want to keep improving the festival and just just make it a better and better experience but it's been like slow growth like steady over the years it wasn't like just one big jump it was right. slow and steady every year yeah so you started with seven acts and now this year how many are you bringing on board we're bringing uh well 75 wow yeah yeah so it's quite big and yeah. the first, so the first music is going to kick off on the Friday night? Yeah, yeah, we have, uh, on the Friday night, people who have been before or who haven't, we close down all of Broadway and Mill Street to traffic, and we have uh, classic cars on the street, which are a big hit. Uh, people love to come and check out the fancy cars, and we have bands on the street. We also set up a stage on Broadway now. In the past, uh, for a while, we used to feature all of our local talent in a tent in the parking lot behind TD Bank. Yeah, yeah and uh, well, fire regulations, we weren't allowed to do it anymore. So, okay. Yeah, so we decided before the pandemic, we were going to move it, and then the pandemic hit. So last year was the first year with a big stage on Broadway, and so that will be up again. That worked very well. Uh, so there'll be bands playing on the stage, there'll be cars, there'll be people milling about on Friday night. And our main stage runs simultaneously. So we have a band from California coming that I'm very excited about. Uh, international award-winning touring band Rick Estrin and the Nightcats. If you, you know, not into blues music, that name doesn't mean anything, but they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> they're a really good band and they tour the world. So Amazing. we're excited about that. Yeah, so that's kind of kind of how we kick it off. That's great. Alex, do you want to talk a little bit about the growth of Celebrate Your Awesome since the first year and then of course a little bit of the lull over the pandemic and then how it came back last year? Yeah, so the first year was, uh, we estimate 2,500. And That's then really good. the yeah. next year literally doubled to about 5,000. And then um, it stayed around about the same number, but our last year after the two that events that happened online, we estimate somewhere between 7,000 and 10,000 people that kind of went through um, on the day. So it definitely brings a lot of people, especially like we were on Mill Street for those years. So putting 10,000 people through Mill Street in one day is <laughs> a so lot of traffic. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was a lot. Last yeah. year felt like a yeah. lot. And blues and jazz as well. I think mm -hmm. people were just so excited to to get out after the pandemic and yes. I know Blues and Jazz was really the first event that I had gone to after the mm. pandemic with that type of people Absolutely. right and the vibe on the street was awesome and Absolutely. I've been to every Blues and Jazz as long as I can remember and I've loved all of them but there was something really special about last year. There's a big excitement I mean, I'm sure you felt mm -hmm. it at your event that yeah. people were so excited to be back in person mm -hmm. and seeing people even though they were a little bit afraid still you know I think we were just coming out of where you weren't going to be wearing a mask at all mm -hmm, times yeah. and and afraid to shake hands with somebody mm -hmm. you know it, it was nice just well, it really changes the way that we like experience community when we get to be with other people especially yes. we got like a really good wake up call we weren't able to you know be with our loved ones yes. let alone strangers on the street so it's definitely a huge deal and i was at blues and jazz and it was yeah. it's always an incredible event so nice when you yeah. can see people and give them a hug now it's yeah it's great exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty special and again orangeville is really known for that feeling of community and that feeling of bringing arts and culture mm -hmm. especially onto the street so that everybody can enjoy it and i love how accessible it is. Mm -hmm. um, Blues and Jazz has done a great job over the years of keeping it yeah. affordable and free for families and that there's very few events within Blues and Jazz that you have to pay for. So do you want to talk about that a little sure. bit? And so one of the ideas I had when I started the festival is I wanted it to be <clears throat> no barriers for anybody. Just, you know, didn't matter how much money you had or not, that you were welcome and you could come to the festival. 
and have a great time. So the idea was to run it for free everywhere, in the park, on the street. Um, reality setting in after many years mm -hmm. is that costs have gone up a lot. They have. And so we've, we found that especially last year, coming back after the pandemic, a lot of stuff went 30, 40% higher than we were doing before. So uh, we decided to, a few years ago, start charging admission to the main stage and the Opera House. And uh, we feel it's a fantastic value because the performers that you, you're seeing, you would be paying a lot of money to see them anywhere else. So because we're subsidizing the patrons with our grants and sponsors, we can keep the price really low. And uh, I just, for instance, we had a performer played in Muskoka the night before our festival a couple of years ago. And to go see him was $100, just his band. Wow. And you're coming to see six bands <laughs> at our festival for $10. Yeah. Mm. You know, so the, the deal is good. Mm -hmm. And you know, if $10 is too much f for you, we have so much free stuff that you could spend the whole weekend and never go to the main stage and still have a great time. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Celebrate Your Awesome as well. We've we've kept Celebrate Your Awesome free. free. And can you yes. talk a little bit about that and how we've managed to do that? And well, the same sort of thing. Um, we yeah. uh, kind of do the the grants and everything, and you know, fundraising in the community. We have a, a particular one member of our committee, Kim, who is just incredible at doing that um, that crowdfunding thing and getting the community involved in donations and grants and all that stuff so we've been able to keep um, the cost <laughs> free so um, we have local talent and drag performers um, musical artists we have um, some years we've done um, people doing like face painting uh, school bus entertainment for kids where we have games going on, um, community partners coming and donating their time and their resources. And uh, yeah, we're able to give people um, a, a fun day for free. And it's 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 a, a luxury to us, really, to be able to um, do the, f the amount of fundraising and get the amount of support from the communities that we can offer these things for free because it is definitely a reality where things things very easily could not go that way and we'd be having to charge but um, thankfully we've had so much community <laughs> support Absolutely. so much where um, we're able to keep things free and have everybody come out and enjoy no matter what your budget is unless you want to spend your money on the great artists that also come and sell their stuff so let's talk a little bit about this year so we've sure. got lots of exciting stuff happening at both festivals so Larry we'll start with you what's going on what are the dates yeah. of blues and jazz okay so we're June 2nd to 4th this year so coming up soon very soon yeah, and you soon. guys are soon <laughs> after us yeah and we uh, yeah uh, so we have the Friday night, which I described, and then on Saturday we have a main stage, which runs Saturday, Sunday. We use the Town Hall Opera House for a venue, which I wanted for years and years. It was always booked, and we <laughs> finally got it, you know, for Such the last great space. five or six. Yeah, so we tend to put, like, uh, jazz music and acoustic, like, real listening music inside the Opera House, put the louder bands outside, <laughs> and uh, we have the Broadway stage, which features mostly local talent. On the Friday night, we have a few out-of-town bands, but Saturday and Sunday, you're going to see some of the best local talent, Campfire Poets, Heather Cats, mm -hmm. uh, Soul Collective, some really good bands. Yeah. And then uh, we also run workshops, so we, you can learn how to play harmonica, you can get guitar, blues guitar lessons. We actually mm -hmm. have, cool. a, we have a dance workshop this year, so it will be featuring blues and jazz dance, get instruction on that. Uh, those are being held in the, the uh, I'm going to get the name of the Covenant Alliance Church. Okay. We usually hold them in the library, which is under construction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> so we, uh, Sandy Brown has been generous, and, and we have that space available to use Beautiful. to hold our workshops this year. Uh, yeah, and Sandy will be running a couple of events out of there in the evenings as a venue as part of the festival. Oh, excellent. So it should be fun. Yeah, and then... Uh, so we have, we have the cars on Friday, we have uh, a market on Saturday, so the farmer's market is always running, and then there's a, there's a hometown market on Mill Street, which features vendors all the way down Mill Street, crafts and food, and we have our own vendors over by the park, Alexander Park, so the whole downtown, there's kind of food courts everywhere. And Sunday, another big event is motorcycles, so we have the, the blues and bikes uh, being run by a new club this year, a local club is going to take it over. Oh, and uh, 
I, I won't say the number, but they're expecting a lot of motorcycles <laughs> okay. more than we had before. So uh, we've got it zoned off so you can listen to the music, you can go watch the show and shine motorcycles if you're into that. So it's going to be a lot going on. That's awesome. It sounds like a fun packed weekend yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Alex, let's talk about Celebrate Your Awesome. Talk about the date and what we've got going on at the event this year. Celebrate Your Awesome is Saturday, June 17th, uh, 2023, obviously. <laughs> um, we will be, we start the day off with a walk and um, we have local talent happening. We have um, Jumbo Solutions that does drums in the morning um, or at 1 p.m. it starts. And we have local vendors and artists that are along the street. We have drag performances. Gotta talk about the location change. Oh, yes. We are changing the location to um, 2nd Street this year instead of being on Mill Street. So all down 2nd um, Street will be our vendors. We'll have the stage for um, local performers. We have musical artists, Jumbo Solutions, Unless, Nick Mustafa. Um, there's a quite, we're still kind of working out the lineup, but there's quite a few local musicians that will be coming. Uh, we have drag performances happening on the main stage as well and um, some in the street. We have a walking human library. So in previous years, we've done the human library inside the library, but we are under construction, so we're doing a walking human library. So we'll have the same kind of idea with the human books that are sharing their, um, their stories, their experiences with people walking about and conversing with all of the event attendees. So yeah, there will be a lot going on. Yeah, there's, there's no there's lots of fun. It's going to be very colorful, very loud, very <laughs> musical. Rainbows and glitter yeah. 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 <laughs> Can't miss it, for sure. Yeah. Um, what you may not know yet, because uh, I was just working on some stuff in the background before I got here today, but we are going to do a Drag Queen story time again this year, nice. which we did last year as well, and it was really well received by cool. the kids. They loved it. Again, this year, because the library's closed, we're going to do it a little differently, and we think we're going to be using Alexandra Park to do that this time oh. around. So, um, all through Alexandra Park, you're going to have lots of stuff that everybody can come and uh, participate in. Nice. So it's going to be another full nice. day. Yeah. So when does it start? When does everything start? 1 p.m. And goes till? It depends how long you want to stay. So we have <laughs> um, our vendors hang around till 6, 7. We have performances going all the way till 10, 11 p.m. at night. Yeah. So yeah, 10 p.m. Um, things will be wrapping up. But yeah, it'll be from it'll be a good nine hours of fun in between 1 and 10. Wonderful. Yeah. So what's next? So we're going to get through this year. Yes. Um, we've got about five minutes left to talk about what's the future of each of these festivals. Mm -hmm. So Larry, if you had a well. crystal ball, what do you think would be coming <laughs> next for the Blues and Jazz? I will say next year is going to be big because okay. it's our 20th it's anniversary. It's going to be your 20th, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I have ideas. Nothing's con concrete <laughs> yet. Yeah, of course. Uh, we'll see what the budget allows. But <laughs> we, uh, you know, it's funny with our festival, uh, we would love to have big name music come and perform, but the budget is realistically not there to do that. But people just come to the fe to the festival and know they're going to have a great time, and they know the quality will be there. They're going to enjoy what they see. Yeah. So, uh, if you're into the music, these are the best of the best in Canada, and you know some international acts. But uh, you know you're not going to hear the pop stars. It's a blues and jazz yeah. festival. But it's great music, and the thing I—the the, only—you know—one of the main reasons I started it is to expose people to this music that they may not have even considered. And sometimes they end up hearing something they go, "Oh, I didn't know that was blues. I didn't know that was jazz." Yeah. And, and it's kind of just uh, turns on some light bulbs in people's heads, gives them some new experiences. So in the future, uh, I mean, I have no plans to stop at the moment. <laughs> it's, Good. It's. Uh, it's, it's just trying to keep improving the experiences and, uh, you know, try to just uh, make sure that we're giving back to the community and creating a space for everybody to gather and, and uh, you know, enjoy and give back to the community. Well, I think sure. one of the things that I've always appreciated is that despite how the festival's been growing, and it has year after year after year, you keep improving it, you keep making it better and bigger, and it's more people at each one, right. is that you continuously always support local. You always we make do. sure that local artists are featured. You always yes. make sure local artisans are displayed in the in the market area. Yeah. Um, you've always done a really great job of Thank not you. letting it get that big where it loses its orange identity. One so. thing I wanted to mention is the support from the from the community has been great yeah. over the years. I've talked to organizers from other festivals and it's not always the case in every town and I think Orangeville is really exceptional. The, the support from the council and 
the BIA and uh, local businesses has been amazing. Like, uh, there's, there's, when I hear some of the other stories from other festivals, it's not very smooth, you know, right. and, and Orangeville is so supportive of, of our events. So, you know, we really appreciate the festival organizers. We're, we're a volunteer group and we appreciate the support. And it's a volunteer job that's a pretty full-time job. Yeah, as yeah. soon as this year's <laughs> festival ends, yes. you're quickly wrapping up loose ends and starting the planning for you're next exactly year. You're exactly right. So, yes. Yeah, I know how that goes. Yes. <laughs> Alex, what about you? So you're newer to the, com to the committee. Mm -hmm. um, so what is your vision? What would you love to see from Celebrate Your Awesome over the next few years? Well, I absolutely would love to see the event that we do, the Pride and Diversity Day, to continue and expand and grow. and. Um, like everything else and um, I hope also that Celebrate Your Awesome as a committee can we can start doing um, more in the community. Uh, it takes a lot to do the one event but um, same kind of thing we have such amazing support from the community so many people that want to help and um, be with us and put in those volunteer hours so we'd like to um, continue to do community things like that by may maybe doing um, other smaller events to give back to the community and I know we've talked about um, doing stuff for schools and just being able to take all of the support we're getting from the community and put it right back in. So um, I'd like to see us expand in the impact that we make on um, youth, especially Creating in our community. Spaces. Yeah, making sure that that um, those safe spaces, the nurturing that human connection continues um, to be that way and gets bigger and more impactful throughout Orangeville. So I'm really excited for kind of where the committee is headed because we have so many people that are just willing to put on all these hours. So um, let's see how much more we can do beyond just our one event day throughout the year, how much can we impact the community? How much can we give back to our community? Well, and one thing we've been able to do this year, just to kind of wrap up where we are, is that uh, for the first year, we've been able to donate bursaries to oh, nice. both high schools in town um, to allow LGBTQ plus um, students who are going on to post-secondary or who aren't quite ready to go on to post-secondary mm -hmm. yet to be nominated by their teachers and That's peers cool. and mm -hmm. for a scholarship, a little bursary. Yeah, so yeah. um, we're doing two, two for each school, which is very cool. It's such a huge deal to remove those barriers for, for youth and queer youth in the community is a really, really big deal so yeah okay. last words exciting. for everybody we got about 30 seconds I want to thank you both for being on sure. first of all but last words wishing you all the best for the festival yeah. and do you have anything uh, for the yeah community? just uh, come on out if you don't if you can't find a hotel room stay with your friends and neighbors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. and uh, yeah just if you've never been before uh, you'd be in for a great time and you, you don't know what you're missing and Alex, thank you for being here and thanks yes. for being a part of the committee. Yeah, and any last you. words for the community before we end off? Yeah, come out, same thing. Yeah, um, it's a beautiful day. It's wonderful. It come is. join us. Um, it's going to expand, so be part of it. Awesome. Come to Blues and Jazz because I've never known anybody that's been disappointed <laughs> exactly. after going and it's a huge deal. Everybody goes, so <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah, come out. Thank See you guys events. both so much for being here. And you heard it here first, community. It's time for you to go out and enjoy these festivals. The first and third weeks of June, we've got lots going on in town. So so thanks for watching the post office. We'll see you at the next show. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games